Hi, I'm Akhilesh Kumar Shivasto. In the series of the programming of the graphs, we have discussed about how to represent the graphs and how to find out the VFS and the DFS for the given graph in the early lectures. We have also seen how to find out the total number of connected components in the graph and how many elements are there in each of the connected component in the earlier lecture. In today's lecture, we will see how to find out the minimal spelling tree of the given graph. You must have heard about the spelling trees. You must have heard about the minimal spelling tree. In today's lecture, we will just see how to find out the minimal spelling tree. We will write the algorithm for the same, and then we will convert that algorithm to the program in C++. So let's look at a problem. So here is a problem on the right hand side. And the problem says that we have a graph, which is the weighted graph. Each of the edge in the graph has been assigned a weight. And we have to find out the minimal spanning tree for the given graph. So in this, we have the vertices. So let's write down all the vertices here. So the vertices are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. For finding out the minimal spanning tree, we need to set a key value for each of the vertex. And we need to find out the predecessor for each of the vertex. Initially, we set the predecessor of each of the vertex as nil. Meaning of the predecessor here is that which of the vertex has got explored from which of the vertex. So we assume that no vertex has been explored from any other vertex. So hence, the predecessor of each of the vertex here is nil. For a root of the minimal spelling tree, let's suppose that 0 is the root. The key value for the root has been set as 0. And for rest of the vertices, the key value has been set as infinite. We are putting all these vertices in the priority queue. And from the priority queue, I will delete the vertex having the minimum key value. So you can see that the key value minimum here is 0, which is of vertex number 0. So when we delete this vertex, I now explore all the edges going from this vertex 0. So from vertex 0, I have the vertices. This I have the edges 0, 1 and the edge 0, 3. 0, 1 edge has a cost 7 and 0, 3 edge has a cost 5. So for updating the key of the given vertex, it means the vertex 1 and vertex 3, we will have to see what is the current key of vertex number 1 and what is the current key of vertex number 3. So current key of vertex number 1 and 3 both are infinite. The cost of the edge from 0 to 1 is 7 and 7 is less than infinite. So I can set a new key value for vertex number 1 that is 7. Similarly, the cost of the edge from 0 to 3 is 5 and 5 is less than infinite. So the new key value for the vertex number 3 will be 5 because this is less than infinite. So I am updating the key values for these vertices. For vertex number 3, for vertex number 1, the key value is 7. And for vertex number 3, the key value is 5. For all other vertices, the key value remains same. Since I have updated the key values of vertex number 1 and 3, and these vertices have been explored from vertex number 0, hence the predecessor of these vertices will be set as 1. Now, since all these key values are there in the priority queue, I am going to delete the next smallest key or next smallest vertex from the priority queue, which is 3, because 3 is having key value as 5. All other vertices are having more key value than the vertex 3. I will now explore all the connections from 
vertex number 3. So vertex number 3 has a connection. Let's look at all the connections from 3. I'm marking it with the red color. So 3 to 0. Vertex number 0 has already been deleted from the priority queue. Hence, I will not consider this edge. From 3, there is another connection 1. And 3, 1 edge has a cost 9. The key value of vertex number 1 is already 7. The cost of the edge is 9, which is not less than the key value of 1. So I will not consider this updation. From 3, there is a connection to 4. And the cost of the edge is 15. The earlier key value of vertex number 1, vertex number 4 is infinite. So I can set a new key value 15 here or vertex number 4. From 3 to 5, there is an edge and the cost of the edge is 6. The key value of vertex number 5 is, five, uh, is infinite. I can set the new key values as 6 here because the cost of the edge from 3 to 5 is 6. So these are the two updations and rest of the key values remain same in the priority queue. Since the, the, uh, the key values of vertex number 4 and 5 have been updated, hence its predecessors will also be updated. So the predecessor of 4 will be set as 3 and predecessor of 5 will also be set as 3. Having done this, we will once again find out the vertex with the minimum key in the priority queue. In this case, the vertex with the minimum key is 6 and vertex number is 5. So I am deleting this vertex 5 and will explore the connection from vertex number 5. So from vertex number 5, there is a connection to 3, but vertex number 3 has been deleted from the priority queue, hence I will not consider this. From vertex number 5, there is a connection to 4, which has the cost 8. The earlier cost or earlier key of vertex number 4 was 15. We can update this key value to 8 because 8 is less than 15. From 5, there is a connection to 6, that is 11. Hence, the key value of vertex number 6 can be updated as 11. The key values of all other vertices will remain same. Since these vertices means 4 and 6 have been updated, and they have been updated from 5, their predecessors will change and the new predecessor for vertex number 4 will be 5 and new predecessor for vertex number 6 will also be 5. Now we will once again delete the vertex with the minimum key value from the priority key. This is vertex number 1 with key value 7. We will see all the connections from vertex number 1. So you can see that from vertex number 1, there is a connection to 0, but the vertex number 0 has already been deleted. From vertex number 1, there is a connection to vertex number 3, which has also been deleted. From vertex number 1, there is a connection to vertex number 2, which has a cost 8. So the key value of vertex number 2 can be updated as 8. From vertex number 1, there is another connection of cost 7 to 4, vertex number 4. So we can update this cost as 7 here. So two vertices have got their key values updated. Those are vertex number 2 and 4. And these have been updated through vertex number 1. So their predecessors will change to 1. The predecessor of vertex number 6 remains same. That, that key value also because there is no updation in this case. So now we will once again delete the vertex number with the minimum key value. So in this case, that vertex number is 4. So let's see the connection from 4. 
So you can see that the connections from four is two with the cost five. So we should update this because five is less than eight. From vertex number four, there is a connection to one, but but one has all already got deleted. From vertex number four, there is a connection to three. This vertex has also been deleted. From vertex number four, there is a connection to five, but this vertex five has also been deleted. From vertex number four, there is a connection to six, and the connection has a cost nine. So nine can be updated for the six because nine is less than eleven. So these two vertices have got their key values updated. So to their predecessor, it means their predecessors will be set as four. For two, it will be four, and for six also it will be four. Now, if I delete the vertex number two because vertex number two has a minimum key value, let's look at the connection from vertex number two. So from two, we have several connections. Let's explore them one by one. So from two, there is a connection to vertex number one, which has eight, but vertex number one has already got deleted. From two, there is a connection to four, but this connection can also not be updated because the vertex number four has already got deleted. So we cannot update anything new here. So the only option we have is that we delete once again a vertex from the priority queue, which is nine. And since there is no connect, uh, there there there. There can be no updation because all the elements, other elements from the priority queue, have already got deleted. So we will be ready for the minimal spanning tree construction. So what shall we do? That let's write the vertex numbers wherever they are in the graph, and with the help of the predecessors, we will construct the minimal spanning tree. So I have written all the vertices. Let's look at the connections. You can see that the vertex number zero has no predecessor. Vertex number one has vertex number one has got updated from zero. It's wrong. Vertex number one has got updated from zero. So it means zero to one there is an edge. Vertex number two has got updated from four. So Four will have four to two. There is an edge. Vertex number three has got updated from not one. In fact, it has got updated from zero. So zero to three, there will be an edge. Four has the predecessor one. So one four, there is an edge. Five has a predecessor three. So three to five, there is an edge. Six has a predecessor four, so four to six there is an edge. So this is the minimal spanning tree. If you mark the edge cost here, so this becomes the minimal spanning tree. So now let's write the algorithm for the same, and we will convert the algorithm to the program. So what we need to do here for writing the algorithm, let's say the name of the algorithm is MST Prim. In this case, an adjacency list will be given to us, and A weight is also given. Here, in this case, we are considering that a weight matrix is given. So we need to set the predecessor of each of the vertex as nil, and we need to set the key value of all the vertices as as infinite except the root node. So what I am doing that for all the vertices, let's say for i equals to. Let's write like this. For all u element of vertices of graph, you have to set the key value of each of the vertex as infinite, and you have to set the predecessor of each of the vertex as nil. 
once this loop finishes you are going to set the key value of the root node as 0 so here in this case a root will also be specified then what we'll do we will insert all these key values in the priority key so what you can do that uh, while setting up the key values you can insert these in the priority key let's say the nq operation is there by which you set the or you insert an element in the priority key so we are going to insert the vertex number u in the priority queue and then after this you are going to set the key value of the root node as 0 now uh, whenever you are inserting a vertex here in the in the priority queue you should insert the key of that vertex also in the priority queue after this what you'll do you will repeatedly delete the element from the priority queue unless until the priority queue becomes empty so let's say there is a function which is named as is empty and we are going to check the is emptiness of the priority queue so while the priority queue is not empty you will keep deleting the element let's say you have deleted an element u from the priority queue deletion let's say is the dq operation from the priority queue having deleted the element you will look at all the connections from u so for for all u that is adjacent to let's say for all v that is adjacent to u to so if the v is if v is the element of the priority queue then only you should try updations so if v is the element of priority queue and the cost of edge wuv is less than the key value of v it means there is a chance of the updation so how will you update you will update the key value of v as wuv and since the vertex number v has been updated from vertex number u you should set the predecessor of vertex number v as u so this operation will keep continuing and when you are done with all the updations and the queue has become empty you will stop your operation and you have the, with you the minimal spelling tree now having done this uh, operation uh in with with the help of a question we should now try to find out how to code this so for coding this let's look at the algorithm once again and try to find out that what will be the elements for the coding here we need a adjacency list and we also need the weight of each of the edge so what you are going to do you are going to implement the adjacency list such that the each of the adjacent vertex along with storing the adjacent vertex we have the weight of the edge also for example if i have a simple graph let's say like this 1 2 and 0 and the cost of the edge let's say here is 3 here we have 10 and here we have let's say 25 so we are going to maintain the adjacency list there will be three elements in the array of the edges array of the list let's say this represents 0 this represents 1 and this represents 2 so from 0 we have two connections 0 to 1 and 0 to 2 now for 0 to 1 i am representing 1 is the connection and 25 is the cost of the edge similarly from 0 we have a connection to 2 also so 2 is the vertex number and the cost of the edge is 2 10 and we will be storing the otherwise also because this is the undirected graph 
So from zero to one, if this is twenty-five, so one to zero, there will be a connection, and the cost of the edge will be twenty-five. From zero to two, we have maintained the entry. Similar entry will be maintained for two to zero, and the cost of the edge will be ten. Similarly, if I am making the connection from one, so one to zero has been included. One to two has not been included. So one to two, there is a connection of cost three, and two to one also there will be a connection that will also be of cost three. So I think we have included all the edges. Let's say the cost of edge twenty five has been included twice. Cost of edge three, this has also been included twice, and cost of edge ten, this has also been included twice. So now this is the this is the way how can we make the adjacency list in which we are not only storing the connection but we are storing the cost of the connection also it means the cost of the edge. So in the C plus plus what we can do we can make a pair and pair will be storing first the vertex number and then the cost of the vertex. So if we have to create the adjacency list. so the adjacency list can be declared like this so we have a vector and in this vector we are storing two two things v and cost it means this is being stored in the pair form so we are taking a pair of two integer values and this will be the array of linked list so hence a d j n where n is representing the number of what is this now along with this we need to maintain the key and the pie it means the predecessor now key and the predecessors are the simple vectors these are the very simple vectors as you can say that it can be declared like this vector of vector of integer values Named as key. Similarly, vector of integer values, which is predecessor. So let's say P R E D is representing the predecessor. Now we need we need to have a priority queue. So what we can do that we can use the priority queue S T L in the C plus plus. You must be knowing that for using the priority queue, we declare it like this: priority underscore queue. Of integer type values, let's say the name of the priority queue is PP. So initially, it will not have any elements. To insert any of the element, we need a function push. So PQ dot push any value whenever you like to insert an element. Similarly, when you need to see see what is the largest element in the priority queue because the priority queue is by default a max priority queue or the descending priority queue. so to find out what is the largest element in the priority queue you can use the function pq dot top and if you want to delete the top element then you can use the pq dot pop function because we need the uh, uh, min priority queue or the ascending priority queue here what we can do we can use a comparator whenever we declare the priority queue so we will see this in the code i think the rest of the things are very very simple we are going to use the key we are going to use the weight with the help of the adjacency list we need we will be setting up the precedence for a predecessor uh, so all these things are very are going to be very simple but yes there will be one interesting thing that to find out if an element belongs to the queue or not it means whether that the element has got deleted from the queue or it is already there in the queue we will be using the in mst function or in mst uh, vector which will be telling us whether a vector belongs to the mst or not if a vector does not belong to the mst it means it's there in the queue if a if a vertex has already been included in the mst it means it has been deleted from the priority queue so now lo let's look at the code for the same
So let's look at the code. And uh, in this code, what we're going to do, we are going to ask the user about the number of the vertices. The size of the AdSense list will be same as the number of vertex the user has input. The only difference is that we're not taking the usual AdSense list, but we are actually storing the vertex number and the pair of uh, the vertex number and the cost because we are going to store the edge cost here in the AdSense list itself. Then we're going to ask about the total number of the edges in the graph. This is E here. As many edges uh, the user has input, we will take the endpoints of the, the edge. Along with that, I'll be taking the input of the cost of the edge also. So A is one of the endpoint, B is the another endpoint, and the cost is the cost of the edge. This we already have discussed about that. Uh, if the A and B are the connected vertices, in the A adjacency list, we will push back B. In the B adjacency list, we are going to push back A. But along with the, the uh, edge, edge endpoint, we are going to store the cost also. Hence, it is a, it is getting a stored in the form of the pair. So if you put do two values in inside the curly braces, it becomes a pair. So we are going to push back the pair. After this, we are going to see that uh, if uh, the AdSense list uh, hence formed is correct or not. So the total number of entries in the AdSense list are n. So for 0 to n minus 1, for each of the AdSense list, we are going till the size of the AdSense list and printing the two values, the first one, the vertex number, and the second one, the cost of the edge. So you must be knowing that, or we perhaps have discussed some time back in the earlier lectures, that if there are, if there is a pair of kind, let's say A comma B, then the first value is denoted as FIRST or taken as the FIRST. And the second value is taken as SECOND. So let's say in the adjacency list, in one of the adjacency list, we have the entries like this. Let's say this is the zero number entry or zero number adjacency list. And let's say the entries are 1, 7. Then we have the entry 3, 4. And let's say there is the entry 7, 2. So there are three entries. So this entry will be zero number entry. This entry will be one number entry. And this entry will be two number entry. So in the adjacency list, zero, the first entry, which is zero index entry, it has two elements. So the first element is denoted as FIRST dot FIRST. And the second entry will be dot second. So ADJ zero zero dot second. So this denotes one, and this denotes seven. Similarly, if I take zero, uh, sorry, not zero zero, but one zero and 1, 1. Extremely sorry for a one very basic mistake. I'm just correcting it. <clears throat> when I'm referring to A, D, Z, 0, 0. So this is dot first, and then 0, 0 dot second. So 1 and 7. So if I have to refer to the one entry, then ADZ01 dot first and ADZ01 dot second. Similarly, if I have to refer to this entry, then I'll be referring to ADZ02 dot first and ADZ02 dot second. So this way we can refer to the entries. So it is all this because these are not required. I hope you must have understood about the concept of the first and the second in the vectors. Now, having printed all the connections, we're now going to uh, build the MST. So for building the MST, we need to have a vector known as uh, in MST. So the in MST in the line number 39, 
is a vector it has a size n is means the number of vertices and each of the entry has been initialized to zero meaning that this vertex has not been included in the msd and then a key value for all the vertices it means n vertices the key value should be infinite so hence i have initialized all those values to integer maximum similarly i need a predecessor vector also because i need to maintain which of the vertex has which predecessor initially i have defined that the predecessor of each of the vertex is minus 1 because no vertex uh, has been explored yet and after this i am setting up the predecessor uh, the key value of vertex number 0 as 0 i am assuming that the zero number vertex is zero since i need the min priority queue hence the comparator is required here and the comparator is greater and the name of the priority queue is vq in the priority queue we are going to push the values in the form of the pair hence the pair of the form key comma vertex number the keys will the vertices will be deleted on the basis of the key value hence we are we should include the keys also for the uh, consideration while deleting the element of priority queue so 0 comma 0 means 0 is the key value of the vertex number 0 after this we are inserting all the uh, vertices in the priority queue since we already have included the vertex number 0 hence we need to include vertex number 1 2 and minus 1 all these vertices have been included or inserted in the priority queue in the form of the pair the key values for all these vertices are integer max and the vertex number is i after this we will be constructing the priority queue for construction of the priority queue it is required that we have the uh, we have an idea about that how many edges should be there in the priority queue or oh, sorry in in the minimal spanning tree so you must be knowing that if we have a minimal spanning tree of uh, n vertices then we should have the n minus 1 edges in it this is the connected acyclic graph hence if n vertices are there there will be n minus 1 edges so since we are going to delete the priority queue for n minus 1 times for each of the deletion we are removing one element from the priority queue let's say that is x and x will be a pair it will be the pair of the form key comma vertex number so let's write it here as key comma vertex number so let's take uh, uh, the vertex number which is the second part of the pair in v and let's insert this vertex in the minimal spanning tree so in mst is a vector for v vertex the status has been set as one it means this vertex has been included in the mst now we will have to see the uh, connections from v hence we are going to look at the adjacency list so whatever is the size of uh, adjacent v we will be doing or we will be removing the element from this or sorry we will be checking the elements from the adjacency list and will be looking at all the connections so whatever uh, pair we have taken that will be of the form vertex comma weight as we already know in the adjacency list so vertex is now being taken into the vert in the uh, variable named vertex and the weight has been taken the variable named weight so the first value will be the vertex number and the second value will be the weight so whatever connection we are going to explore we need to check if this vertex is not there in the mst so the processing can be done only if this is not in the mst if it has already got included in the mst there will be no no operation so if the status of vertex in the mst is zero it means this vertex is not there in the mst so now let's check if the weight is less than the key of the vertex or otherwise if key of the vertex is greater than the weight so it means that the, there is a possibility of the updation so the key value of the vertex has been set as weight and the predecessor of vertex is set as v so key is getting updated along with this the predecessor is also getting updated so now uh, let's uh, since the key value of this vertex has got updated so we need to push this key value in the uh, priority queue hence the pair of the key and the vertex is now getting inverted in the priority queue so this will continue this will keep continuing for the n minus 1 edges having done this when we will print the vertex number then the uh, predecessor and the key just to make sure that 
whether we have got the correct MST or not. So we are done with the code. Let's check the this code with the examples that we example that we have solved. So on one side, we are going to take this code, and then on the other side, we will take this graph. So we have this graph. Let's say let's take this graph. In this graph, what we have done, we have assigned the edge number. So let's run this code and just verify that uh, if this code is working fine. So the total number of vertices in this graph is 7 from 0 to 6. And then the number of edges are 11. The endpoints of uh, edge number 1 is 0 and 1, followed by the cos 7. Edge number 2 has the endpoint 0 and 3 with the cost 5. Edge number 3 has the endpoint 1 and 2 with the cost 8. Edge number 4 has endpoint 1 and 4 with cost 7. Edge number 5 has endpoint 1 and 3 with cost 9. Edge number 6 has the endpoint 2 and 4 with cost 5. Edge number 7 has the endpoint 3, 4 with the cost 15. Edge number 8 has the endpoint 3 and 5 with cost 6. Edge number 9, 4, 5, and 8. Edge number 10, 4, 6, and 9. Edge number 11, 5, 6, and 11. So here is the uh, adjacency list, and here is the MST. So for each of the vertex, we have found the key and the predecessor. If you want to verify it, here is the table from which you can verify the predecessors. This vertex number 0 has a predecessor nil, that is minus 1. Vertex number 1 has predecessor 0. Vertex number 2 has predecessor 4. Vertex number 3 has predecessor 0. Vertex number 4 has predecessor 1. Vertex number 5 has predecessor 3. Vertex number 6 has a predecessor 4. So this way, we were able to find out the minimal entry correctly. So thanks for watching. In the next lecture, we will discuss about how to find out the single source shortest path using the dice tracer path. Thank you. Thank you everyone for watching.